424 once again with NASCAR E2! And in this episode of our season with Ty Majeski's number 60, not iRacing Ford, we are going to be completing race 23 of 33, which is going to take place at Road America for the Johnsonville 180. I think Johnsonville is a place that sells barbecue shit. Or at least they're a company that sells barbecue shit. I don't know. I feel like I've seen that, that sponsor before, which is kind of a first for the Xfinity series. But in the last episode, we raced at Bristol, and we finished in fourth place, which is our third consecutive top five finish. Now, I'm not trying to confirm anything, but I think we're going to win at Road America and get our fourth win of the season, giving us our fourth consecutive top five finish, and finally our fourth win of the season. And then before that, we had three races in a row that were just gone awful. So three great races, three bad races, and then, well, then we had this, but even that's not a top five right there. I don't know, but hopefully I'm really getting back into the swing of things, can... Keep it going with Road America. Ty Dillon won the last episode, so that was his second win of the season. Here are the point settings right now. Of course, Justin Allgaier still at the top. Elliot Sadler second. William Byard has not been doing very well lately, but he's still in third with that win that's going to lock him into the playoffs. Eric Jones fourth. Reed, Ryan Reed fifth. Um, I drove Ryan Reed up like the track in the last lap of Bristol, didn't I? If I remember that. And you can look through the rest of the point settings. I need to calm down. I've been commentating like the shit out of my videos, I think, the past couple of videos, especially the last one. I commentated so freaking hard, I think it was too much commentary. It was a whole new level of mind-boggling commentary. And then there's the playoff standings, if you want to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and get to Road America. I kind of try to have a different appearance in every video. So in the last video, I was wearing my jacket, and in this one, I'm not wearing my jacket, and my jacket's right here, and it's like I'm trying to make it look as if I'm not recording all these videos back to back all at the same time, but I am, and everybody knows that I do, and if anything, I could have helped myself by wearing the jacket in this video, because this is going to be a race that's less difficult than Bristol with less stress, so I'm not going to sweat as much, and I sweated so hard at Bristol while wearing my jacket, oh my god, I swear to god I'm autistic, but let's go ahead and get to qualifying. Coming off this last corner, we're going to start our first lap and our only lap of qualifying. I'm so used to this two laps that I get to qualify in NASCAR 2005 Chase with the Cup, even though I finished that LP over a month ago. But anyhow, I saw my manager drive off the track twice in my out lap because I haven't raced here in ages. So I'm just going to get on my brakes right about here. Is that good enough for you, game? Yes, it is. See, these x series cars and just all the cars in this game, their brakes, they... They don't really work that well. I small draw off the track right here, but this time I did quite decent. I'm kind of afraid to um, use my brakes a little less than I should in this game because I just don't know what it's going to do to me. So I'm hitting the brakes so freaking hard. Like this game has given me PTSD. Just um, in terms of a race car driver, I'm so I hit my brakes way too much because I just don't know what the car's gonna do. See, I, I hit my brakes too much right there based on reality, but because it's a video game that's stupid, it automatically is like, no, you didn't hit the brakes enough, even though you hit it too much. I kind of get that NASCAR 2011 the game at Darlington. I don't know why, but that's what the case was back whenever I recorded that video. Uh, why do I have the feeling I'm gonna start in dead last freaking place because I can't handle this track's existence anymore? I remember running fast laps here, not driving off the track. I can do everything on my own and finish well online and stuff. And well, I didn't even bother qualifying whenever I went to record the uh, intro for this game. Well, for this series, the Xfinity series. And um, I did fine because I didn't have to go qualifying. But I guess now that I'm qualifying and haven't raced here in ages, I'm just going to be awful. I know that I only have to let off the gas in this turn right here. Almost drove off the track because I guess I didn't turn the car early enough. I'm trying to think of exactly what to say. This game is so freaking hard to put the words. Just hit the brakes right here. Last time I hit the brakes a little later and the car almost went crashing into the tire barriers. Somehow the curb kept me from finishing the turn. I guess that lap wasn't too bad. I didn't drive off the track. I'm about to! Oh god! Oh, this is the more entertaining part of the video, isn't it? It's kind of sad. I mean, maybe we'll have just have a bunch of road course shit, shit show like we did at Mid-Ohio. Except at a bigger track with a shorter race. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same length race, just the track is bigger, so we have less laps for that reason. What do we get? 29th. That's a qualifying spot in the top 30. That's on the inside. Well, I, I think it's on the inside. The first turn is a right turn, which means I should be 
on the right side, not the left side. I don't know what this game's going to do. I didn't even take a look to see who qualified on the pole, but like it even matters at this point. Let's start this race. Let's see what we can do. See, I'm starting 19th. The first turn is a right turn. The inside lane is the other lane. But, uh, oh, I remember this shit. I remember that stuff. The, all the lanes, you, both of them, just everybody starts hitting the brakes in the front stretch way before the corner. I don't know why they do that, but they do. Oh, my God. Dylan Lumpton. We're far wide. Uh, damn. I don't know what the hell we're right there. I tried to say as much as I could about what was actually happening, but even I couldn't put it to words. First stage is two laps, by the way. Probably not even going to make it to the end of the, the, the actual stage. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is exciting in weird ways. I drove in the back of McLeod because he wasn't going fast enough in the turns. But it's a road course, so they're never going to do that. We're in 18th. We started 29th, and we're in 18th. So within the first 30 seconds of this race, I made up 11 positions. I'm such a god. Tommy Jeske, you know, he's such a god. I was saying that at Watkins Glen, but now I am the god. And I am Ty Jeske. Ty Majeski at the same time. I, um, it's my own new schizophrenia, you guys. I mean, it's not new, but we all know that whenever you play a NASCAR game and you're not racing as a custom car, that, that is yourself, you are schizophrenic throughout the entire season. For some reason, my car didn't want to stop weaving and wobbling back and forth, and I pushed somebody off the track because I couldn't get the car to control itself. But we are in 15th place now, as we pass Joey Gase. Fuck you, Joey Gase. You're like, uh, you're like NASCAR E2's John Wood. Uh, Brandon Jones and Kevin Harvick are having a, a little sex show for us to watch if you're interested in that. This is uh, the new version of HBO right here for NASCAR fans, right here on JC1424. Uh, I'm in 14th place. I'm trying not to get tied to off the track. I think I'll be in the top 10 before this before this lap is over. I was going to go dive underneath Elliott Sadler, but then I realized I'd get stuck on his outside and hit the brakes in time. Eric Jones is going to legitimately pass me. I just got legitimately passed at a road course in NASCAR E2. This is this is a new low for me, personally. Like, I can't even, it's, it's a road course. This is NASCAR E2. I just got passed. Full on, clean pass. Damn. I lost my dignity. Fuck you, Eric Jones, took my dignity away. Give me back my dignity, Eric Jones, bastard. I am wrecking Kevin Hart because he won't get going off in the final corner. So that, was the first lap here at Road America. We went through an entire lap. No caution. Let's see if we can do it again and actually complete this entire stage. Wow, they have more straightaway speed than me. What did I do to deserve that? Did I finish that lap in 10th or 11th? I wasn't keeping track, but I want to say that... Actually, no, he couldn't have because that's Cole Custer. He's in 10th. I am so freaking dyslexic. Like, it's a new level of dyslexic, honestly. Because, you know, I was passing Kevin Hart when he was 11th. For some reason, that made me think that I was in 10th, but it's not how it works. Oh, Cole, Cole, Cole Custer, I really should just run you off the track for what you did to me at Bristol, but um, that was last race. It's in the past. What happens at Bristol stays in Bristol. That's not the saying, but we'll, we'll use that anyway. Okay, so we're going to go on the outside right here. Hit, sorry, hitting the brakes now. Okay, let's not crash into Michael and that. Said he crashed into us. Okay, don't pull in front of me. Do douchebag. God dang it. I was trying to be on his outside, but no, he kept coming up in front of me, and then he started hitting the brakes earlier than I wanted to. You say, I never get used to the fact that you don't hit the brakes at the same time they do. They just keep doing it and pissing you off. Michael and I got run off the track because he wouldn't stop being on my inside and my outside and just in my vicinity. Yeah, God forbid someone gets in JC1424's vicinity. If you don't know that word, this is, uh, this is the YouTube dictionary right here. Wow, William Byron just ran just now go off the track. He really wants to get his championship back going again. I ran him off the track because my car wouldn't turn, you know. Stupid ass tight Xfinity Series cars. They hit the brakes. I don't have to hit the brakes for this turn, but I did anyway. We're in seventh place. Let's see if I can get a top five to end stage one. We're getting a few stage points here. That's nice. Uh, I need to start hitting the brakes. Breakity, make a breakity break. Joey Logano is having yet another good race. I mean, he started bad bad in the last one and then he started well in this one and he's doing well but I don't know. Hmm. The cup drivers are randomly doing well it's so weird it's I mean it's bad but it's I don't know it's refreshing that something it realistic is happening a cup driver doing well though he's not in first place dominating like he always does so we are actually going to get a top five in the first stage 
That is fantastic. Yes, fifth place. Let's see if I can finish in the top five, too. I'm going to win this race. I think I'm going to win this race. Matt tipped one. Now Kamikaze Games is unsubscribing from my fucking channel. God damn it, Matt Tipp. What are you doing to me? Uh, everybody's going to take pit stops after stage one. And it makes sense because we have six laps remaining and only three laps on fuel. And we're about to run a lap under caution, aren't we? But let's go pit. Four tires, two cans of fuel because I think we need that to make it to the end. No damages to repair. And um, the car felt fine on fresh tires. It was only a little bit worn whenever the tires came in at the end of the stage. But we're gonna take our pit stop. Because it's road course, apparently this game has a thing with road courses where you don't lose positions. Everybody took four tires, everybody got two cans of fuel, except this time my picker didn't suck. Because I swear to God, they get four tires every other time, but this time it's special because it's a road course. I'm trying to find something to say that could be an excuse for that. To, you know, help defend the stupid ass company that is 704 Games with their video game right here. What I, I just can't. I don't know why I try so hard to defend them sometimes. I think I kind of helped Jeremy Clements inadvertently take the lead, but I don't know. I mean, it was just me being around other drivers that kind of helped him get in that position. Now, I'm trying to take the lead through that corner and fail because I suck, but I will get it done eventually. I'm going to lead um, the last lap of stage two. The thing is, once I take the lead, I'm not going to be driving the track in a conservative way to not, you know, wreck them and to avoid crashing into those guys. So, it's like, will I be able to handle being on my own? Because apparently I couldn't really do that whenever I was in qualifying. I should be able to. I'm actually getting a sense of competition right here from, was that, uh, William Byron or Elliot Sadler? No, that was, I don't know who that was. It was DC Solar Car. I don't know who drives that one. Golly, we can side-by-side -side battle between me and Jeremy Clements because I can't clear him. And just because of that reason, he's affecting how I race the racetrack. And by doing that, I guess it's just making it harder for me to, you know, get by him. But we're around him finally. I'm on my own. Hopefully I'm getting more used to the track than I was whenever I first got here, whenever I started the video. And I can pull away. Unless a caution happens where I can end this stage. I think we've got this one in this bag at this point. This, this, this. I said the word this so many times in that sentence. We, we got a caution right at the start finish line, which in stage two early, I kind of like that. I don't have to run any more extra laps. Everybody's going to take pit stops after stage two. So we're taking pit stops after every stage, apparently. And I guess that happened at um, Mid Ohio and uh, what's the other place that we went to? Watkins Glen. Uh, two cans of fuel, four tires, because I know I'm going to need it. And they're probably going to do the exact same thing. And we're still in the lead. At least they didn't do that thing at Watkins Glen where I wound up in 29th somehow after pit stops. It's the last stage. No more pit stops. How many laps is this final stage going to be? Uh, four laps. Uh, I think that's four laps. Yeah, yeah, that's four laps. Okay, I had to count it out in my head. But four laps of probably absolute boredom. Or I could go driving off the track in the first corner. Okay, for a second I thought I was going to, but no. Let's just pull away and hopefully... This game doesn't throw a caution in the last two laps to basically reset our last two laps over and over again until we finally make it to the finish because that's usually what the caution does. And have, you, get a, you can get a caution on the last lap of the race and it'll still make it a green light checker. I wish it would end it under caution like it's supposed to, but... Mm, please, can we just make it to the end without another freaking caution? Yeah, what he said.
No, I don't. I don't need any fuel. Because, you know, I kind of want to win this race. Okay, wait. The, don't throw a caution. Do not throw a caution. D do not give us green-white checker. Please. Just... Thank you. I won the race. I did it. And what if racing's probably all like... Now I need to get a PS4, because apparently whenever you play this game on the Xbox One, they throw a caution over and over and over again, and it never ends under caution. It, you know, it always gives me a green-white checker, because I remember watching him race at this track in the Xfinity Series in his career mode, and it was just agonizingly stupid. But, there you have it. I ran that entire final stage, we had no cautions, I pulled away, I almost drove off the track, I think, like, twice, and I wasn't really adjusting to the tower that well. But that was our fourth consecutive top five and our fourth win in the season. My PS4 literally just ran out of memory to record this video because this race was so long and stupid. It says 18 minutes, but I guess I spent freaking 12 minutes just qualifying and all that crap. Daniel Hemrick finished um, eight laps down. He apparently got a DNF. I guess that was what brought out that caution halfway through the race. But we won a stage, and then I guess we won the last stage of the race. So I guess that's two stage wins, but not really. Uh, Matt Tift, he won that first stage of the race, but we got a fifth place finish in the first stage, so we also got stage points there, and you can look through the rest of the race results. Um, I didn't record the victory lane celebration, because that's kind of where the game started recording game footage. Well, not the game, but the console, whatever. That's why I kind of need to use my Elgato to record NASCAR Heat 2 and other PlayStation 4 videos, but I can't, because my computer's a bastard. <sighs> my computer's mom died, and now all it has is a dad. I'm my computer's own daddy. But we ran the fastest lap in the race, which is not that surprising. We led the most laps as well, leading eight laps. Not surprising. And we were on the move because we started in 29th and finished in first. Did I also get the toughest break? No, Daniel Hemrick did because he started 13th and finished in 40th. If I got the toughest break as well as being on the move, that would not surprise me because that's how much of a goddess I am. I'm a transgender goddess. We have three races left until the playoffs begin, and two of those races are going to be completed next weekend, starting with Darlington for the Help a Hero 200, or the Sports Clips Help a Hero 200. That's an interesting race name. I kind of like it. Race 24. And then after that, we have Richmond for the Virginia 529 250. Virginia 529 250. What kind of stupid ass race name is that? Just now, Geyer is still at the top of the points table, of course. And we had ourselves a little battle with him and William Byron halfway through the race, which was what made the thumbnail. Also could have gone looking for the moment with Jeremy Clements where we were battling him for the lead, but that was actually further back, so I didn't feel like it. And, uh, well, there's the points table in full if you want to take a look at that. Blobbity, blobbity, blurbity, blur. Stuffity, make stuffity stuff. I don't know why I do all the point standings. I don't think Austin Stitzel's even interested in my NASCAR E2 content. Uh, prove me wrong if you do, you just don't comment. I don't know. But here is the playoffs table right here. Justin Allgaier is still at the top of the playoff standings because he's got five wins. But we are now in second place because we just got our fourth win. And then you've got the rest of this stuff, which is not going to change that much from the last race because we just won, not someone else. Well, I'll see you guys next weekend at Darlington. From what I've heard, Darlington is one of the easier tracks in this game, though I don't know if that's actually true in championship mode. We'll find out. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.